seven. Austin Hedges is the catcher hitting eight. And Corey Stangenberg is the second baseman batting ninth. So Upton Jr., Norris, Upton, Kemp, Alonzo, Barmas, Venable, Hedges, and Spangenberg. There's the lineup for the Padres. Now for the hometown Oakland A's. Billy Burns will lead off and play center field. Marcus Simeon will hit second, and he will be the shortstop. Josh Reddick is in right field. Reddick will hit third. Stephen Vogt is at first base this afternoon, and Vogt will hit in the cleanup spot. Billy Butler hits fifth. He's the DH. Brett Laurie will hit sixth and play third base. Mark Canna is in left field hitting seventh. Eric Sogard is the second baseman hitting eighth. And Josh Fegley will do the catching and hit ninth. So Burns, Simeon, Reddick, Vogt, Butler, Laurie, Canna, Sogard, and Fegley. And first pitch is upon us. Here's Vince Catronio. Melvin Upton Jr. standing in for San Diego. And Kendall Graveman into the windup. The right-hander's first pitch is cut on and missed. For strike one, a good sinker at 90 miles an hour. We welcome you to A's baseball on this Thursday afternoon. 61 degrees, not a cloud in the sky here at the ODOT Co. The one strike offer to Upton Jr. He swings and pops it up. Shallow right. Sogard out and Reddick coming in. Josh will make a two handed catch and Upton. Just two for 14 this year is retired to start this afternoon's game the between position. the A's and the Padres. So Steven Vogt at first. Eric Sogard at second behind Graveman. Marcus Simeon, the shortstop, Brett Laurie at third, with Josh Fegley behind the plate. Mark Hanna in left. Billy Burns in center. Josh Reddick is in right. The A's in the Fort Knox gold tops. The alternate jersey in the same for the Padres. They've got the alternate blue tops with the interlocking SD on the left side of their chest. And here comes the first baseman, Derek Norris. Right hand batter stands in. And he takes a strike. It's 0 1. Adam Hammery with the balls and strikes today. Mike DeMuro, the umpire at first, Trip Gibson at second, and over at third base, the crew chief, Brian Gorman. The glove over the cap in the 0 1. Swing and a miss. Good breaking ball. And Norris is batting 261 with seven homers and 39 driven in and a hole and nothing in two. Hi, Ray. How are you, Ben? It doesn't say a lot about catchers in an offense. You have both a catcher at first today, and the same with. Derek Norris keep them both in the line. It's a four catcher day. It's it's a Ray Fossey day. 0 2 pitch just off the outside corner. Graveman, a 24 year old out of Alexander City, Alabama. You were a catcher, weren't you, Kite? No, I was not. Oh. I, was not. I, I wish I was, though. I would feel more comfortable. <laughs> Here's the 1 2. Fastball too tight. Two balls and two strikes. Yeah, I, I wore number 15. Thurman Munson was my guy. That's great. Back in the day. Did you, did you catch and throw with batting gloves? Uh, no, I did not. Well, you played in warm weather. See, Thurman was the only catcher I ever saw that used batting gloves on both hands when he caught. He said, I don't care about throwing. I want to keep my hands warm. And he did. Quick release. That sidearm oh. delivery to second. <laughs> Talk about a slice. Better than your swing golf swing. <laughs> I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Here's a 2-2. Slow curve line to left and right at Canna. Mark stays with it. And makes a letter high catch and Norris is retired for the second out. Nice to get away with a hanger and that was a hanger from Kendall Graveman but actually looked like he had him struck out on the previous pitch good sinker down on the end but the hanger that Derek Norris just hit too hard fortunately right at the left fielder. But that's a pitch that Kendall said after his last game when he went the distance against the Angels that he felt so much better about and, and understanding that it's a pitch he needs to feature more. Much like Jesse Chavez with the changeup last night. Isn't the line of the movie go the distance? You would know, Ray. You know every line of Field of Dreams. Now here comes Justin Upton. Two outs, nobody on. Just underway, top of the first with no score. And Upton takes down and away with a sinker, ball one. Graveman, since coming back from the minor leagues, has allowed only three runs or less in all five of his starts. He's won two, lost one. Is 1 0 offer. Fastball outside. Two balls and no strikes. Not a cloud in the sky today. Light breeze blowing uh, out to left here at the ODOT Co. Billy Burns a couple of steps toward left for Upton, who leads the Padres with 13 homers and 41 driven in. Here's a 2 0. Checks the swing. Fastball runs inside off the plate. And Graben behind 3 0. Glenn Hoffman, the coach at third base for San Diego. And Jose Valentin is at first. 3 0 pitch. It's low and outside, ball four. So a two out walk leaves the door open for Matt Kemp. 
I think there's always a reason why it's the supposed uh, best uh, hitter is hitting third. And see how Grave, Graveman, the first two hitters, although he hung the pitch to Norris, but four pitch walk to the third place hitter. And of course, Upton, one of the most powerful guys in their lineup, so not a bad idea. Now, Matt Kemp, I have to say it's been a disappointing year in some regards for Kemp coming over from the Dodgers. Batting just 246, only three home runs, although one of those against the A's in San Diego. And 34 driven in. He'll DH today. First pitch to him, good fastball away. And it's strike one on Kemp. Upton can run at first base. He leads their club with 13 steals. He has not been caught as they play their third game under their interim manager, Pat Murphy. Who Followed the interim manager Dave Roberts, who fired, followed the fired Bud Black. 0 oh, 1 breaking ball, cut on and missed. And it's nothing at two. And you wonder with Murphy and the Padres with their struggles, so they've lost four in a row while Bob Melvin's team has won four straight. If Murphy would want to be a little more aggressive with guys like Upton to try to generate some offense a different way. Because right now they do seem a bit out of sorts. Kendall steps off. It's still 0 oh, 2 on Kemp. The stretch and the throw over to first base. Graveman's allowed only one steal this year. And the guy that has that stolen base is uh, pretty good, Mike Trout. That's right. Two were thrown out in his last outing on Saturday in Southern California against the Angels. David Fries and Albert Pujols. Runner goes, 0 2 pitch is outside and no throw by Fegley. Fegley thought maybe it was strike three. Instead, stolen base number 14 for Justin Upton. And he's in a scoring position now. The one ball, two strike count on Kemp. Well, you've got a great job anyway, and I think you're right. And perhaps Fegley didn't think he had a chance to throw him out, and then was really hoping to get strike three. It looked like a pretty good pitch. Surprised that Kemp did not at least attempt to swing at it. So one and two, the count. And Kendall, a long look in to Fegley. Betty's in fires. Swing and a miss. Got on the slider anyway. And the inning is over for San Diego. No runs, no hits, no errors. A man left at second base. At the end of a half, it's San Diego nothing, and the A's are coming up. Thirty-year-old right-hander uh, Ian Kennedy on the mound for San Diego. No score bottom of the first inning. No relation to Kevin. No, I don't believe so. Okay. Billy Burns, Marcus Simeon, and Josh Reddick against Kennedy, who was a 21-game winner for the Diamondbacks back in 2011. One of only four pitchers in the history of that franchise to achieve that lofty number. But a struggling 2015 for Kennedy, three and five, an ERA just under six. 
And now facing Billy Burns. First delivery is off the plate outside ball one. Vinny, don't you feel like you could say the same thing about Kennedy that you said about Andrew Kashner the other day? Well, How does this guy not win more games? He's got good stuff. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Swung on foul back by Billy. An eight game hitting streak for Burns. Batting 316. Two homers and 13 RBIs. It does make you shake your head. 5.84 ERA. Yeah. Up at the corners for Burns, the 1 1 offer. It is on the inside edge, and it's 1 and 2 now on Burns, who scored three times for the A's last night, had three hits. Difference today, Kennedy doesn't have to hit like Cashner tried to hit on uh, Tuesday and got upset when he made out. Here's a 1 2. Outside corner, and down goes Burns on strikes. Good breaking ball away from Kennedy, even though he missed the target of the catcher. Austin Hedges. He's behind the plate. Derek Norris at first. Corey Spangenberg at second. Clint Barmas the shortstop. With Yonder Alonzo at third. The brothers Upton in the outfield. It's uh, Justin Upton in left. Melvin Upton Jr. in center. And uh, Will Venable is in right. Now Simeon bats. And Kennedy's first pitch is swung on and fouled off to the right. And back out of play. Strike one in the scoreless bottom of the first inning. Simeon last night fell victim to the night air here to Coliseum ball that uh, he hit well to right field. Thought he hit well enough to get out but not nighttime here. Oh one missing up and away one ball one strike and I think timing was everything because Simeon hit that ball that you're talking about in the seventh inning where yeah. Butler's three run right. homer came in the first inning. It was a key component to the A's uh, off and running against San Diego. One one pitch is high ball two. Two balls and a strike on Simeon. Josh Reddick waiting on deck. And it really took Billy Butler in our post game interview on the TV side to confirm that it was a changeup because he hit it like it was an off speed pitch, just bad location. Good location for Billy Butler. Outfield the other way on Simeon. 2 1 offer. Misses the plate outside. Ball three. Three balls and a strike. Kennedy's last outing a good one, although no decision against the Dodgers on Saturday. He worked seven, allowed one run on four hits. He walked one and struck out four. Is 3 1 swung on line to left, but right at Upton, and Justin will make the catch or two outs. And now Josh Reddick will bat. And considering you talked about Butler, the home run in the first inning, which you weren't necessarily sure it was going to go out, it kept on carrying. And then the two infield hits later for a guy that's hit some rockets all over the field, hasn't had anything to show for it. Nice him to get everything back in his regard. And that was great from his standpoint. And, and again, he was telling us, and he, and he makes a good point. He said, in the past, he said, those are balls up the middle were in the center field for base hit. Now, with a the shift, they're being caught or knocked out. Reddick stands in, two outs, nobody on, no score in the first. He takes a fastball strike from Kennedy, and they overshift on Josh. Eighth in the league in batting average at 303. 10 homers and 41 RBIs. That RBI figures in the top five. Backdoor breaking ball from Kennedy is wide. One and one the count. Reddick three for 15 in the previous three games against the Padres. He's have won all three. Here's the one one. Up and in with a slider. Ball two. Two balls and a strike. A 9 1 win in the opener of the series on Monday night. Then Tuesday afternoon, the comeback win. Six to five, and then yesterday the 16 2 drubbing for San Diego. 2 1 offer bounce on the right side in the shift from the outfield. Spangenberg has it, throws the first, and the A's are retired. 1 2 3 by Ian Kennedy. At the end of one, the A's and Diamondbacks, no score.
top of the second inning a sun splashed crowd at the Coliseum no score after one. And yonder Alonzo will stand in against Kendall Graveman then Clint Barmas. And will Venable. And Kendall's first pitch is swung on and grounded wide of first base for strike one. Just the second time this year he's playing third base. Batting 317 couple of home runs and 18 driven in. Got to make room for a catcher. <laughs> Here's the 0 1. Outside a changeup, one ball and one strike. New game today on the broadcast. Every time Ray mentions the word catcher, everybody gets a chance to uh, have something special happen. What do you think about that, Ray? I think your suggestion about our partner that whenever you'd say somebody had to put. Here's the 1 1. Swing and a foul back. What, Ray? What? Never said every time you'd mention. Ken's name. Oh well, yeah, Ken Quark. Back at a later date, and what would happen? Uh, folks around the Bay Area would <laughs> would would what? would toast him. Would what? Did he? <laughs> I, that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> Let's really get to it. If you're going to get on catchers again, I love catchers, right? You know that. Yeah. You were number 15 in honor of Thurman Munson. You had to. Like, one two offer. It's a slider low. Two balls and two strikes. I carry a Thurman Munson card wherever I go, right? It's in my bag. It's kind of a good luck charm. Started that years and years ago. <laughs> it had to be years and years ago. <laughs> Here's the 2 2. Fastball just off the inside corner inside. A full count on Alonzo at 3 and 2. Will Middlebrooks played third base last night, had a home run for the Padres. Here's the payoff. Fastball rolled on the right side and right at Sogard. Gobbles it up, throws the first. And there's one out. The A's playing this weekend against the Angels. Marked down Saturday as the A's uh, take on Los Angeles and a sunny gray solar powered gnome Start will come down. your way if you want 15,000 fans to walk in and get that gnome, which features the A's ace pitcher. The ball really does light up from the solar panels built in the gnome. You can get your tickets by calling 877 493 ball or visiting athletics.com slash tickets. Barmer stands in. He takes outside ball one. Sonny will open the series tomorrow against the Angels in a return matchup against Matt Shoemaker. They both went against each other on Sunday, and uh, Gray got his eighth win. He's the ERA leader in the majors at 1.60. 1 0 pitch, a front door breaking ball over for a strike on Barmus. Batting 286, two homers and five driven in. The 1 1 swung on, hit hard towards center. Back is Burns near the track. He'll step onto the track and make the catch in front of the 400 foot sign. Barmas gives it a bit of a ride. Stays in the park on this a sunny Thursday afternoon, and that'll bring Will Venable to the plate. And then the ground ball by Alonzo, the previous out. We were talking about earlier about the sinker ball. Three and two. Just turn the sinker over a little bit. It's a ground ball easily to second base. And I'm sure he did not want to get the count to three and two, but that's a nice weapon to have in the event you do. And get a hit it a hit on top of the ball, hit it right to your infield. Now Venable stands in on the left side and he takes a sinker at the knees, strike one. He's batting 258, five homers and 18 driven in. Two outs, nobody on for the Padres in the second, no score. Here's the 0 1. Curveball popped up. Right near home plate. Fegley looking up in the high sky. Coming down also is Steven Vogt. And Josh will stick the glove out. He'll make the catch. And it's a 1 2 3, top of the second for Kendall Graveman. Steven Vogt will start the bottom of the second for the Athletics against the Padres after one and a half. No score.
down to the bottom of the second. A's and Padres no score the finale of this home and home four game series between the A's and the Padres. It's happening all around baseball. Vote Butler and Laurie. Somebody referred to it as the squeeze week in Major League Baseball. Seven games, nobody gets an off day around baseball. First pitch, the vote, a strike. I'm, I'm not kidding. I don't think anybody, any of the players are real thrilled with this two and two late travel for some of these teams. It's hard to really understand what day of the week it is. Steven batting 279, and he takes a fastball at the knees away, and it's nothing in two. He's got a dozen homers. 47 RBIs his RBI number third best in the American League Miguel Cabrera leading the American League with 51 for the Tigers Here comes the 0-2 turned over the changeup faded outside and I think I think all you have to do is look at the out-of-town scoreboard and see the number of night games on this the final game of this four game series and how many of those teams are gonna have to be traveling late at night Here comes the one two offer way inside with a slider Two balls and two strikes. I think a perfect example. The Rangers who are in the American League West, but playing night games in Los Angeles after the uh, the two games they had at home against the Dodgers. Here comes the 2-2. Swung on, hit hard towards center. Back on it is up and gliding back, still back, and he'll reach up and make the catch. He loves to play shallow, and Melvin Upton Jr. tracks that drive down from Vote. And there's one out and four in a row were tired by Kennedy as Billy Butler comes to the plate. And one thing that Upton did, of course, he is an accomplished center fielder, but something that Ty Walters talked about with Billy Burns, that Upton turned his back to the infield. Run to the spot. Run to the spot. And that's what the outfielders do. And Billy Burns is getting to that point instead of turning one way and needing to turn the other way. But Upton did it perfectly, and that's why he's a very good center fielder. Now Butler, the DH. Right hand batter stands in and he takes low from Kennedy ball one. His average of 260 after getting four hits last night, five homers and 32 driven in. He picked up 11 points on his average. Here comes the 1 0. Outside, two balls and no strikes. We were joking last night on radio, as you mentioned earlier, two infield hits for uh, Billy Butler last night. It was like the headline of the paper was. Billy Butler gets two infield hits. <laughs> oh, by the way, the Warriors have their parade tomorrow at, uh, not at 10 a.m. <laughs> 2 0 pitch a strike on the outside corner. It's 2 and 1. And the, the Warriors will be having their parade uh, honoring the NBA champs in downtown Oakland tomorrow. Hope to see some of them out at the Coliseum tomorrow night. 2 1 pitch is swung on and popped up and fouled round near the Padre dugout. Norris is over, and the first baseman who is learning on the job. Sticks the glove in the air and stabs it and there are two outs for the A's It's not an easy play and especially in the position where Derek Norris is at first You're accustomed to being behind the plate having the ball behind you and maybe going down the line But as a catcher you're always referring to the first baseman or third baseman and Derek Norris I think appropriately said by you stuck his glove out and made a nice catch We'll take a look at the A's minor league report brought to you by Sharf Investments Visit WeLikeValue.com to see how Sharp Investments can help you achieve value in your investment portfolio. Brett Laurie stands in, and he takes wide for ball one. Ike Davis completed his rehab, going one for five yesterday for Nashville. 21 at-bats for the Sounds, and he's back with the ball club today. Might be activated tomorrow. Fastball strike to the outside corner on Laurie. He's batting 283, six homers, and 29 driven in. Double A uh, Midland was rained out last night. They've got a doubleheader at San Antonio in a uh, rain drenched Texas. 1 1 pitch wide, trying to continue to pitch Laurie away. Two balls and a strike. Stockton pounded Lake Elsinore 9 3 last night, and Peoria beat Beloit 8 3. Here, scoreless in the second. And the 2 1. Fastball hit hard toward left center field. That's in the gap. It's between Upton and Upton, and it's all the way to the wall. And Lori will jog into second with his 13th double of the year. Man, he has had some kind of success recently. Seven for his last 14, and good to see him reach out and pound that ball toward left center. Well, just a low fastball, and they were shading him towards right center a little bit, but. For him to take that pitch almost on the ground and drive it a no doubt double to left center and good to see him coasting again because he's still it's amazing how much he's playing considering his back issues and 
when he does take a day off it because because he pretty much has to because of his back hitting about 120 points less yeah. at home the Coliseum than he has been on the road so getting a chance to build those numbers back up in his home ballpark certainly encouraging now Mark Hanna trying to drive in a two out run and open the scoring in this game against San Diego he swings at the first pitch fouls it back for strike one Mark batting 251 eight homers and 26 driven in two for five against the Padres and playing left field today Kennedy off the first base side of the hill as he looks into hedges for the sign a glance at second base and here comes the 0 1 it's on the outside corner at the knees Canada thought that was low and outside but Adam Hammery says strike two and it's nothing in two maybe outside corner below the knees but so I got to check on my uh, bingo card huh? <laughs> talking about catchers <laughs> talk about bad call <laughs> so two of them. oh two offer Outside with a slider, one ball and two strikes. But you also know, you also know, Ray, when you get that call, that you try to extend it even a little further, don't you? Of course. As uh, Hedges just tried. But with the uh, supposed uh, monitoring of umpires in their ball strike calls, that shouldn't be able to be done now. I mean, if the hitter swings, that's one thing, but not a call. Laurie at second base. And it's one and two on Canna. Kennedy offers, and the pitch cut on and missed. Got a fastball by him at 92, and the inning is over. No runs, a two out double. Lori left at second base. Kennedy and Graben are hooked up in an early pitcher's duel as we head to the third with no score. We're through two. The A's and the Padres no score. On to the third, and here's Glenn. Thank you, Bets. Shh. Austin Hedges to lead it off. The young catcher for the Padres. And the first pitch from Graveman in for a strike on the inside corner. Hedges, Spangenberg, and Melvin Upton Jr. No score, third inning. Just one base runner allowed by Graveman so far. That was a walk. Hedges fouls it right at home plate. So the count is 0 2. I think a lot of times you can start the game as a pitcher. And Kendall Graveman, of course, knows that he doesn't have to face Ian Kennedy as a hitter, but you can also kind of get an idea how the other pitcher's pitching against your ball club and figure it's going to be a tight game. You, you got to try to pitch a shutout and then take your chances with that. Fastball a little bit outside, 1 and 2. Graveman with a strikeout, one walk, one strikeout so far. I think there are some pitchers that you know when you take the mound, the other side, your club may not be scoring a lot of runs, but Kendall Graveman's good enough to do that. 
slider outside of the strike zone, but Austin Hedges chased it anyways. And that's the second strikeout for Graven. Hedges kind of reached for it and missed it by it looked like quite a bit. Still looking for the fastball that he hit out in San Diego and inside part of the plate. Did not get it on that breaking ball, especially that much out of the strike zone. So one out here's the second baseman Corey Spangenberg. Spangenberg 245 couple of home runs 10 RBIs. He's one for 11 in this four game series and the first pitch is fouled straight back. Upton to follow here in the third inning the Padres. Wearing the dark blue tops today with the gray pants Spangenberg has the pant legs pulled up high around the knees. Sinker low one and one the count. Spangenberg, a left handed hitter. He waits and he slaps one foul left side again, and the count is one and two. Spangenberg was first round draft pick of the San Diego Padres in 2011. In fact, he was the 10th overall pick in that draft. Played in 20 games last year and this year. Let them see if he can win the second base job. Behind in the count, one and two to Kendall Graven, who kicks, and the pitch is bounced up the first base line, but foul. So the count remains one and two to Spangenberg. Padres with just eight runs total scored in this series so far. Which they're going up against. Starting pitching staff that is shut down a lot of people lately. Line foul down toward the A's bullpen. The count remains one and two. Just a lot of Warriors jerseys in the house. Oh boy, you've seen that. that. These two game series, of course, uh, the A's wearing the alternate gold jersey, but in the stands, what was on the. Strength in numbers? Is Strength that it? Numbers. That was their their battle cry yeah. this year, and it worked. It did. Yeah, they're spread out throughout the stadium today, which is uh, good. You see some of the flags on cars as they're driving around the Bay Area. Bob Melvin reached out to Steve Kerr, congratulated uh, him as uh, the leader of that Warriors team. One two delivery, swing and a miss. Good slider down and in, and Spangenberg missed it. So back to back strikeouts for Graveman here in the top of the third. Well, I think we're just all thankful that we get to come Number to the game two. tomorrow night and Melvin watch the A's and the Angels Junior. and fireworks following the game and not have to worry about the Warriors trying to win game seven across the way. But but you also hope that with the half a million people that are going to be watching the That's parade right. that it's just a it's just a great mojo in the city. Absolutely. Upton swings and misses the leadoff man Melvin Upton Jr. who hit a fly ball to right field leading off the game. So I see 10 percent of the half million there to watch in the parade come out here then be oversold. That'd be a good crowd. <laughs> this one popped up foul territory right side vote is under it now backpedaling and it's off his glove. Now right at the last second vote started to backpedal and you could tell. By how quickly he was backpedaling that he was in a little bit of trouble yeah. and he's going to be given an air. Uh, he's given the air because it was camped under it and that's the difference versus someone has to run for a ball to get to it and put a glove on it and especially with the foul territory. But two catchers playing first base and this shows right here just how difficult the job is. It's not as easy as people think playing first base. So the count 0 and 2 to Melvin Upton. Down and away, one and two, plus the high sky. I don't think he ever felt comfortable that it was a foregone conclusion he was going to catch it. I don't think he did. No. And, and That's a good way to put it. Man. A little bit of a breeze, maybe enough to keep making the ball drift away from him. One two delivery, breaking ball. He struck him out, and Kendall Graveman strikes out the side in the top of the third inning. So four strikeouts total. We're going to the bottom of the third. No score between the A's and the Padres.
seeing beautiful weather, not a cloud in the sky. Not too hot, very comfortable to sit and enjoy a ball game. A's and the Padres are scoreless. Going to the bottom of the third, Ian Kennedy has allowed just one hit through the first two innings. He's got a couple of strikeouts. His first pitch to Eric Sogard is on the outside corner. It's a strike. Sogard, Fegley, and Burns for the A's here in the third. No score. 0-1 pitch to Eric Sogard is hit high in the air, foul down the left field line. That's why some of the foul balls have been going opposite direction for the hitters. Pretty good fastball from Kennedy today, even though getting the counts where they might be looking for it, but says a lot if you're not able to get out in front and pull a good fastball. So Kennedy kicks in the 0-2 pitch is a great breaking ball hit to the right side, diving play by Spangenberg, and he throws to Norris. And they get the out. So Spangenberg, the second baseman, diving to his left. And he took a hit away from Sogar on a very nice play. Kind of wish he would have gotten a hit because not even been a leadoff hit, but it also would indicate it. Why would you throw him a curveball and speed up his bat after he just fouled the ball to the left side on a fastball? But he did. Sogar almost pulled it in right field. I've heard you ask that yeah, question I know. a few I'm all, times I'm, this year. I'm always shocked when I see that. I mean, what are you watching if you're going to do that? First pitch to Fegley is a fastball first strike. Fegley hitting 280, a couple of home runs, eight RBIs. Padres play Fegley to pull in the outfield. He's up in his shallow and toward left center. This one's hit high and foul down the right field line. So a quick 0-2. See so if he gets a curveball now. That's true. <laughs> That's something off speed. It's good to see Fegley playing well. He's really enjoying catching, and of course his throwing has been unbelievable. Strong throw, accurate, and doing a great job behind the plate blocking balls in the dirt. Curveball, just like Ray predicted, is hit toward Barbas, the shortstop, whose throw is a bit high, but Norris is able to keep his foot on the bag, and that's the second out. I wonder what it's like for Derek Norris on that play. He sees it happen so often as a catcher. Should I stay on the bag? Should I leap? And try to catch the ball and take my foot off the bag. Will I get down in time to make the play? <laughs> That'd be a little bit uh, yeah. uncomfortable for a guy that doesn't play over there much at all. And watching Barman's throw, he's thinking that's a catcher over there, not a first baseman. He's trying to guide the ball to make sure it was a good one. Two away, top of the order. Billy Burns steps in. And Burns taps one foul down the third base line. It's picked up by Alonzo. He throws to first, but it was ruled a foul ball. So Burns will head back to the batter's box. No score, bottom of the third inning between the A's and the Padres. Have you seen the uh, teammate, teammates Billy Burns throw the bat at the ball impersonations before batting practice? <laughs> That's a good one. And it's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. With the ball he had off the ground last night, didn't throw his bat and still got a base hit. Kennedy kicks the 0 1 pitch is inside 1 and 1. Teammates don't miss anything, do they? Ray? No, they don't, but I think every one of those teammates might be uh, doing personation. You'd love to have his speed. And his batting hammer. Yeah. Think how many infield hits Billy Butler would have. He got two last night with that speed. Fastball inside, so the count 2 and 1 to Billy Burns, who's been maybe the, the best story surrounding the A's as far as an individual player standpoint this year. He's just been. Sensational. 2 1 delivery is a fastball a little bit high and now 3 and 1. I think it also speaks to the looseness of the club, even though the record hasn't been what they wanted. They've been through some excruciating stretches of games, and yet understanding that it is every day, there's a lot of baseball to be played and still going to have some fun with it. 3 1 pitch. It is sliced foul down toward the A's bullpen left field line. And here's a case for Billy Burns, who has tremendous speed. And as was the case on Tuesday when he got on in the ninth inning, stole second, scored on Sogard's hit. Right now, Kennedy and Hedges have to be thinking if he does not get a good pitch to hit, we're going to walk him. He may try to steal. And here is the pitch fouled straight back to the screen. It was a fastball away at 91 miles an hour. Burns checking with the home plate umpire just to see if it was indeed a strike or not. Looked like it was off the plate. But Burns stays alive, so the count remains three and two. Kennedy gets the sign. He kicks and delivers. And that one's hit high and foul down the left field line again. So a good battle here between Kennedy and Billy Burns. Cap, I remember when when hitters would do that. 
And it was sometimes comical to hear what the umpires would say. Some would say, well, you swung at it. So, yes, it's a strike. Thank they you. would never give them the answer that they were looking for, whether the pitch was a strike. You swung at it. Another 3-2. Here it is, and it's hit towards Spangenberg, who dives at second base. He can't get it, and it's into right field for a base hit. So Spangenberg laid out again going to his left. And Burns has another hit. How about that? Can't believe they sped up his bat. <laughs> That's amazing. Somebody likes a curveball, either the pitcher or the catcher. <laughs> That's three consecutive batters. Now, Billy, do your job. And for Marcus Simeon himself, and yep, we've talked about this many times as well, if you see the runner going and you're the hitter, put him in scoring position, let him have a chance to, to get there. And sure Marcus Simeon will be thinking about that. Well, here is Simeon who shows bunt and then pulls the bat back the pitches outside and from a hitter standpoint the earlier the runner runs the better it gives him more opportunity that first pitch out of the strike zone good breaking ball and a good pitch to run on Burns did not maybe trying to pick up the move from this right hander Burns with 13 steals he's been thrown out three times as always a big lead quick throw and Burns gets back in plenty of time. The double by Laurie put him at second, so Kennedy is yet to have somebody at first before uh, Billy Burns now. So maybe that's why Burns didn't go on the first move, not knowing the first pitch, not knowing the move of Kennedy. So the count 1 0 to Simeon, and Burns had a huge oh. jump, but then he stopped, and the pitches fouled to the backstop. And I'm surprised he stopped. He had a big jump, he took about two steps to second, and then he, he stopped. And you know some guys do that maybe just to see what kind of jump they can get all it does is mess up the hitter and Simeon actually swung and fouled the ball back so the count even at one and one Simeon hit a fly ball to the left field in the first inning Kennedy quick throw over there to Norris who's holding Burns on outfield swung around toward right center well, it's amazing how shallow Melvin Upton in center field plays yeah. and it's he plays that way for for most hitters His brother Justin is way off the line and left Burns with a little lean and a Long look by Kennedy Simeon asked for time and he gets time from the whole plate up by By the way Melvin Upton went after votes ball Guided to ten after it, he could play shot because he could definitely go back. Up. No, I like BJ better. Pitch out, nothing going on, so the count will be two and one. Okay, Ray. So if you're a runner, run right after a pitch out, shouldn't that be a good time yeah, to go? It's also pitch out again because you figure the runner is going to be going. So that's the. The issue right now for Hedges and Kennedy and do do you well of course they don't make the call it usually comes from Dave Roberts on the bench. So two and one Kennedy. Burns not running and the pitch is swung out and missed a fastball in under the hands of Simeon. So now the count is even two and two Burns has yet to go. You know one of the things that Burns might be thinking about was the fact that Hedges did throw very well on Tuesday when the A's were in San Diego. Throughout fold on the one that's Call that was challenged, but uh, upheld. It was actually safe. 2 2 pitch, runner not going, and the ball's rolled toward first. Scooped up by Norris. Steps on the bag, side retired. So a hit and a runner left for the A's. We're going to the fourth inning. It's the Padres nothing and the A's nothing.
two starting pitchers both appear to be sharp in the early going. And Graveman will face Norris, Upton, and Kemp. So three good right-handed hitters for Kendall Graveman to face. He's walked one, struck out four. The first pitch is tapped foul up the third baseline, picked up by Laurie right near the bag. Laurie fires it into the A's dugout. So 0 1 to Norris, who hit a fly ball to the left field in the first inning. Overall, seven home runs, 39 RBIs, and one for nine in this series. He hits that one foul again. This one, a bouncer to the far end of the A's dugout. So, Graveman ahead in the count, 0 and 2. 42 pitches for Graveman so far. So, he's had a decent grip on the pitch count in the early going. Raven deals the 0-2 slider away. For Norris, his all-star season with the A's last year, he hit 270 with 10 home runs and 55 RBIs. Slowed down a little bit in the second half. They never got they never got the truth. One-two pitch, swing and a miss. He struck him out. A hard sinker at 91 miles an hour. And when you get a swing and a miss strike three on a sinker yeah, boy, that means the ball is really moving a lot. Well, it's the same pitch he threw down and in now, earlier. I think to maybe even to Kemp Justin in the first Walker. inning and now perfects it down and in. And so he threw him a slider away that he took then sinker down and in for swing over strike three. So already five strikeouts for Graveman. His season high is seven and that came in his last start. Down in Anaheim. Jesse Chavez last night with 11. How about that. First pitch to Upton is in there for a strike. Justin Upton walked and stole the base in the first. He was stranded. Upton one for 11 with a couple of walks in this series. So the A's have done a good job keeping this guy quiet. Sliders outside one and one. And you could probably make a pretty strong argument that Upton is Padres' best offensive player. Perhaps why he was walked on four pitches his first at bat. Just uh, you think about it. One and one. Graven deals, and that's lying down the left field line, just foul. That pitch got a lot of the play. It was a hanger, and Upton, who's so big and strong, just ripped it. But it was fouled by about uh, maybe eight to ten feet. Don't you believe the Padres felt like with all the moves they made this offseason, they were really going to be an offensive juggernaut? Yeah, no question. And you look at the numbers, they're third in the league and runs scored, but only the Cubs have struck out more. And I just kind of wonder how their offense really has come together because you do shake your head at some of the spots. One two pitch is hit hard toward third, backhanded by Laurie. He drops it, picks it up, throws in time to get up to. And that's the second out. Laurie just took a step to the backhand side, and the ball just kind of popped out of his glove, but it just rolled just a couple feet away, and he just picked it up and showed off the strong arm. Now, Betty, number 27. Well, he definitely has Matt that, and Kim. the quickness of it. And for Stephen Vogt, this is one that, as a first baseman, mostly catching. Of course, Stephen has played a lot at first base, so he's pretty accomplished over there, but. Always concerned about the low throws, especially a hard one from the third baseman and a sinker that might be coming. So here's Kemp with two outs. No score, top of the fourth. First pitch is down and away. But I agree with you, Vinny. Statistically, they're a very odd team. Like you said third in the National League in run scored, which is good, but they're second to last in slugging percentage and third to last in on-base percentage. Doesn't fit ball bounced foul past Glenn Hoffman down the third baseline. So the count one and one. And there's so many expectations too with all the acquisitions. Or maybe too many Michael Jordans. I mean you get you <laughs> you acquire and you get a lot of good players. Kemp dribbles one foul or but everybody's gonna get the same number of at bats. We're in basketball. Yeah. I mean in terms of Distribution of the of the basketball might be more difficult when you have a collection of superstars. You're going to, you know where you are in the lineup, and you're going to get that chance every time in baseball. But you're always trying to be the one guy, and maybe that is putting too much pressure on yourself because you're supposed to do things. 
One two pitch to Kemp is inside and a count two and two to today's designated hitter for the Padres. I don't think you know really how your lineup is going to go until you put it together. Sure. Because there's lineups that score a lot of runs that don't seem as powerful as others. This one's reached for it, hit high in the air to left field, and Canna's back, and that one is gone. Matt Kemp. Kind of reached for it. It looked like an off speed yep. pitch, and he got it up in the air and he lofted it out of here. And the Padres take a 1 0 lead. A one handed swing on a curveball. And boy, when you have a, a great sinker and you go two and two and you drop it in, and he just one handed it basically into the seats, and ball is going to carry today. And we just saw it there. Well, you. You kind of go off the swing because yeah. that's the first thing you see, and it really was a. Yeah. He kind of reached for it, but he got the barrel of bat on it, and Kemp homers for the fourth time this year. So one nothing San Diego. And here's Yonder Alonso who rips one toward right center, and that's going to go through all the way to the wall. Alonso will stop at second with a two-out double. So Kemp a home run, Alonso a double, with two outs here in the fourth inning. Try to get ahead with a first pitch fastball, but no sink on it down the middle. Now, Billy, and after a home run on breaking ball, Alonzo was not going to waste any time. This is an area that caused Graveman some issues before he was sent to the minor leagues, the inability to stay away from a big inning. Yeah. But he, he has corrected that since coming back. So here's Clint Barmas. Alonzo at second, and Barmas hits one toward Laurie, who dives to his left, gets up quickly, throws, and... Keeping his foot on the bag is Vogt. Throw was a little wide, but Vogt takes care of it. Side retired. But a home run by Matt Kemp is fourth of the year, and the Padres take a 1 0 lead as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Bottom of the fourth, the Padres now with a one nothing lead on the Matt Kemp home run. So Ian Kennedy back to work. He'll face Reddick, Vote, and Butler here in the fourth. A couple of hits for the A's off of Kennedy. It's the first pitch to Reddick is a fastball, 88 miles an hour, right in there for a strike. Reddick grounded out to second in the first inning. Pitches down and away. Shift is on as usual for Reddick. Alonzo, the third baseman, playing a fairly normal third base spot in a couple steps. Outside, so the spot that's open is really the shortstop. There's nobody there. And that's what Reddick hit it last night, right to third baseman who Middlebrooks was last night, right in the shortstop position. Two and one the count. And the pitch is hit foul. Right back. Well 
behind the A's dugout, but a fan reached up with the bare hand, caught it, and he's got three young fans with him in there. That's right. They're proud. Early Father's Day gift. <laughs> that was that? awesome. He just stood up and grabbed it. 2 2 delivery, and this one is popped up. Could be playable for the catcher, Hedges, who flips off the mask, and he makes the catch, and that is out number one. So Reddick fouls out to the catcher. So one away here in the bottom of the fourth with the Padres leading one nothing, trying to salvage the final game of this series. Steven Volk will hit. So 16 runs and 20 hits. Last night, both season highs for the A's. And tonight, just a couple hits through the first three and a half innings. First pitch to vote is high. What's that momentum saying in baseball? That's momentum right. is the next day starting pitcher. It's a tough game to predict. Well, as we know, Dave Roberts had the biggest stolen base for the Red Sox. Vote takes a strike. One and one the count. That was an 0-4. And you remember what happened in game three before game four, just like what happened last night. Yankees won right. 20 to 2 or 20 to 1 or something like that. And, and it was the big stone the base. They never won again. Curveball grounded past Ty Waller foul down the first base. And everybody in the world thought the Yankees going straight to the World Series after that shellacking on the third game. But what did Kevin Millar say? Don't let us win yeah, this game. Right, he was right. talking about game four. That's right. <laughs> And they did, and they did, and they did, and they did. It's never lost again. Eight and zero oh after that game three of the big championship. Kennedy kicks and fires, and Vote gets jammed. He fouls it straight back, just below us, a couple sections to our left. The ability, though, for a team in that situation, just to focus on all we have to do is win one game. Sure, is a lot easier said than done. Oh yeah. And for them to do that in that circumstance, in that environment, it's quite a story. Not only that, they had to go back to Yankee Stadium. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, it's just like in Anaheim when '86, when the Angels came back and beat the Red Sox. Another one-two pitch, a high fastball, and both swings and misses. So strikeout number three for Kennedy. And two outs here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And he's definitely using his fastball for strikeouts. <laughs> So vote is gone, and that'll bring up Billy Butler. You see, get Butler on base with an infield hit, and still second. Swipe a bag, 0-2. <laughs> He's a fun post-game interview. Yeah, he is. is. Yeah. First pitch to Butler is hit hard, but foul right past Mike Gallego down the third base. Line. Although I must say, Cap, I didn't appreciate you know when he said you know back when you played, they didn't have shifts. So, you see, know that uh, I should have told because I know you don't like. That when you say back when you play, yeah. you don't like it when I say, Ray, when I was a kid, I used to cheer yeah. for you. And Ray doesn't like that. That's all right. I understand. But I don't remember. It wasn't a Ted Williams shift for sure. That one's driven to left center, and that's hit a ton. Upton's at the wall, and Upton makes the catch right in front of the Comcast Sportsnet sign in deep left center field. I thought Butler got it. Yeah, I did too. So it's a long fly out. Upton grabs it in front of the wall, and Butler is retired. So we're on to the fifth inning here at the Coliseum. It's the Padres one in the A's. Nothing.
Top of the fifth. Here's Vince Catronio. First pitch low and outside of Will Venable. <laughs> and the 1 0 swung on line the other way. A base hit for Venable as he slaps it to the right of Marcus Simeon. And the leadoff man is aboard for San Diego trying to salvage a victory in this uh, four game home and home interleague series. And that'll bring Austin Hedges to the I'm just wondering, Glenn, what, how has it been for you doing these uh, simulcast games without having anybody talk in your headset? It's nice, actually. It's, it's really nice. <laughs> Just, I was gonna. I, I, I just was gonna feel do like, that. Before I was gonna stand behind you and say some things while you're doing play-by-play. -play. I just feel like I'm. I'm just at home watching the game with two really good buddies. <laughs> Toss over to first base. Hope Delaire's not listening. <laughs> they know. Better. Do they? <laughs> Hedges struck out his first time up. You cornered me with that question, didn't you? That's what we do. To set the offer, butted, but foul behind the plate. And it's uh, nothing and one on Hedges. And you talked about the drive that Butler had in the bottom of the fourth inning. Felt like he was going to tie the game with the one swing. And, and watching the home run last night in the first inning, I thought he hit that ball better today, plus the daytime. And it just, yeah. just seems like more often than not, Butler doesn't have the rabbit's foot in his back pocket. I had to be a little bit towards the end of the bat. I mean, for it to not to go out because the swing, everything with trajectory and daytime, it just looked like it was going to be a one to one. One strike pitch to Hedges. He sends it out of play off to the right. Nothing into the count. After all, Kemp's ball was not hitting better. It didn't seem like, especially one handed with a breaking ball. Just seeing the contact by Butler and, and watching Upton never feel like a. He wasn't going to make the catch, even though Billy felt like he hit it really well. That'd be frustrating. One nothing Padres here in the top of the fifth inning. Venable a good lead at first, the swing and a fly ball to right. Reddick will have the play. Josh maybe a step or two to his left and makes the catch. And the eight batter is retired. And here comes Corey Spangenberg. He struck out swinging on a breaking ball back in the third. Graveman now batting today, number 15, one walk Corey and five Spangenberg. strikeouts. He gave a lot of credit to Barry Zito and also to uh, Ryan Roberts with Triple A Nashville when he was sent back to the minor leagues. And Barry, of course, all the pitching acumen that he had, and then Ryan Roberts talking about what it's like for a hitter at the plate and sense that the pitcher. Isn't very confident at the moment. Toss back to first base, and Venable is back. That's the tap man. That's the tap man. Did a nice job at AAA. Yes, he has. Certainly, he wants to be back in the big leagues. But until that happens, you you appreciate, I think, if you're the organization that yeah. he's willing to offer that kind of experience yes. and that kind of uh, conversation to a player. And when we were in Boston watching all those guys play, and the TV and the hotel had the the Nashville sounds playing, so get a chance to. Did not see Barry, but uh, the tap man definitely saw him and Cook. And it's to Spangenberg with the runner going and lifted to left and back and over toward the line is Canna. He's going to have a play. Mark makes the catch. And now Venable has to retreat back to first base. One nothing San Diego here in the fifth. After Venable hit the ball to left field, it looked like that's what the Padres are trying to accomplish with a hit and run, trying to get another ball hit that direction, especially with a two seam fastball away from the lefties. Now Melvin Upton Jr. Fly ball to right and a strikeout swinging. That was after he got another opportunity on a pop up that was misplayed for an error by Stephen Vogt in the third. The A's charge with the error. Pitches outside ball one and for the Athletics that was their 64th error of the year. We don't count that one. No, because it didn't do any damage. Didn't extend. Uh, the lineup it did extend in that bad for Upton but it didn't turn the lineup over another batter or two. Here's the 1 0 swung on foul back and it's one ball one strike. So you're saying there should be a, a, a different step. Let's the, the E T D D airs that do damage. <laughs> That's fair right. I agree. Now you need to go back and do some research and no, you <laughs> give us that. <laughs> That's a tat man stat man do that. <laughs> airs that do damage. That might catch on there, Glenn. E T D D. 
A long hole by Graveman and his pitch slider outside ball two because we don't have enough war and whip oh. and fip fip what's that fielding independent pitching everybody knows that Ray well, batting said, average I thought you said pip I said well, that's pip. that's Babbitt <laughs> batting average balls in play <laughs> here's the two one off the plate outside and low three balls and a strike but you know what you put all those numbers together and they do provide uh, value they do provide an opportunity for analysis for every team in baseball so much so that apparently one team is hacking the other <laughs> another team <laughs> yeah. trying to get their information the Cardinals and the Astros 3 one offer is swung on miss hit and rolled on the right side vote has it he'll race up into the bag and meet him in the baseline tag him out and the inning is over a leadoff single for San Diego and nothing more Kendall Graven has allowed one run it was a home run to Kemp in the fourth on the bottom of the fifth now. one nothing San Diego. to the bottom of the fifth inning. Ace trailing at one nothing. Brett Laurie has one of only two hits allowed by Ian Kennedy. We followed by Mark Hanna and then Eric Sogard. A two out double by Laurie to left center is only time up. And Kennedy starts him off and his first pitch is outside ball one. Well evidently if Billy Butler hit his fly ball left hit as hard as Brett Laurie hit his. Got a no doubt. Here comes a 1-0. Fast ball to the outside corner, keeping everything away from Laurie, or at least trying to. And it's one ball and one strike. Outfield playing him the pull. Melvin Jr. in and over in center field. Here's the 1 1 offer. Off the plate. Oh, man. Got a pitch that's called a strike, and Laurie didn't like it. He turned away from the home plate umpire Adam Hamery and certainly blurted something out in disgust. We call him Hamari. <laughs> Here comes the one two tries the slider way outside two balls two strikes. He seemed to catch that one pitch almost in the left handed batter's box. Does Mr. Hammery still have the distinction of being one of the few and maybe the only umpires to throw out a manager during spring training. He did that to Bob Melvin. I think he's done it twice hasn't he. <laughs> well once was enough. Two two pitch ran it up and in three balls and two strikes and what happened it was in Scottsdale. That's right. It was at Salt River where. You have to walk right. from the dugout, and the visiting team is on the third base side, yeah. out to the clubhouses in center field. So quite a long trek there for Bob. Three, two, line foul, past first base. And the door was locked to get, to <laughs> and then he ended up in the Diamondbacks' office where he managed. No, no, it wasn't good. I mean, here's a manager trying. It still bothers me, obviously. That's tough talking about. I can't it. tell. <laughs> but I mean, here's a manager trying to evaluate his personnel. He ejected midway through the game. Give me. I mean, that's. Oh. 
Brett Lurie starting the bottom of the fifth. He's down one nothing. Here's a payoff. It is low with a change of good take that time by Lurie trying to get him to offer at it. And the A's got a leadoff walk. And for the first time today against Kennedy, the A's do get the leadoff man on and see if they can do something with it as Mark Hanna stands in. And you know what, Vinny, with this fastball, Kennedy's fastball, I mean, it makes you wonder who's calling these pitches because his fastball is outstanding. I mean, he's blowing it by guys. They're not getting around on it. And then another off speed pitch in a 3 2 count. And, and it becomes a matter you're trying to fool a guy instead of saying challenge it. And that's what Jesse Chavez did last night with a lead. He had 3 1 3 2. Here's a fastball. Ends up with an easy fly ball to center field. Now Canna stands in and he takes a belt high strike. It's on one. Now don't hit me when I ask you this question. But back when you played, <laughs> how different was it in terms of, I mean, I don't want to pick on Austin Hedges. I'm just talking about in general in today's game. Do you see just the sense of the way uh, pitch sequences yeah. have changed? Yeah. I, I think it was more fastballs back when I played. I mean, it just because the fastball was your dominant pitch. Here's the 0 1. It's low with an off speed delivery, and it's one ball and one strike. And I think it goes into, uh, you know, we're talking about all the, the whips and all the other statistics, the information that is gathered. And I think too many times a pitcher, catcher, Will go with the strengths of the hitter versus the strengths of the guy on the mound who's throwing the baseball, and and I think that's kind of taken away from it a little bit because fastball. I mean, you have a fastball that Kennedy's displaying today, and what uh, Castro did on Tuesday. Why not use it most of the time? Here's the one-one fastball strike to the outside corner. It's now one ball and two strikes, and there is a time, maybe in this discussion, where there is. Uh, analysis or paralysis with analysis because you know he does this on a 2 1 pitch or an 0 2 right. pitch or he swings at this or percentage of the time or ball in the zone or out of the zone where if you if you try to process all that and use it each and every pitch or each and every at bat you're going to find yourself driving yourself crazy. Exactly. Here's the 1 2. That's ball weakly hit right back to the mat. Kennedy looked to throw to second and to hesitate for a moment. Gets it to the shortstop Barmers who fires on to first. And they do complete the one six three double play for a moment that hesitation because Kennedy was ready to throw but nobody was there. We thought maybe it was going to cause a bit of an issue for Kennedy and the Padres but that was not the case. So one six three now two outs and nobody on and here comes Sogard with the A's down hey. one to nothing. And Kennedy was, was running hard out of the box. He did not want to be doubled up and that just shows you that. The slight hesitation didn't in fact accept the fact he almost threw it in the center field, but nice recovery by Barmas at second. Sogard robbed of a base hit by a diving Spangenberg at second base, his only time up. He takes a fastball strike on the outer half, and it's 0 1. A Matt Kemp home run, that's it so far today. It's held up for the Padres. This is uh, very similar to what happened to. Graveman over the weekend in Anaheim. Fastball high. One and one the count. He surrendered a first inning home run Albert Pujols. And by the time the dust settled, the final score is one nothing Angels. As they won the contest. Here comes the one one pitch. Breaking ball line towards center field. Upton toward a right center is there to run it down. And the A's are done in the fifth. No runs, no hits, no errors. A double play. Nobody left. On to the top of the sixth inning, and the ace trail at one nothing.
Mike Bird. <laughs> Top of the sixth inning, one nothing. The Padres in front. We'll take you through the out of town scoreboard. Brought to you by the beautiful Waterfront Hotel in Oakland's Jack London Square. The Astros are back on track. They're leading Colorado as they try for the fifth straight win. A 5-3 lead at Coors Field. Preston Tucker is homeward in that game for the Astros. Derek Norris stands in and he takes ball one inside from Graveman. Norris is 0 for 2. He's lined to left and struck out swinging. Justin Upton, Matt Kemp to follow in the frame. Here comes the 1 0 outside. Corner a strike. There's one that the A's get back from Adam Hammery. One ball, one strike. 16,643 at the Coliseum on this beautiful Thursday. Here's the 1 1. Breaking ball hit high in the air to deep left field. Back in the corner goes Canna on the track at the wall and out of room. It is gone. Derek Norris is eighth home run of the year as he sends one over the 330 sign. And it is 2 0 San Diego. 40 RBIs now for Norris. The second long ball today surrendered by Graveman. As the Padres go deep twice, they've got a 2 0 lead and both times on breaking balls. And Justin Norris Justin. just missed it his first at bat. This time didn't miss it. And now here's Justin Upton, a walk and a stolen base, and a ground ball to third. Graveman came into the game, allowing six home runs on the year. The wind the pitch, swing and a miss. Fastball away, might have grazed it. Held on by Fegley for strike one. Elsewhere, the Angels lead Arizona two to one. That game is at the end of five in the desert. Taylor Featherston has hit his first home run for the Angels, and Johnny Giovatella has hit his third. Oh, one pitch is outside. Corner strike is nothing in two. Visit www.waterfronthoteloakland.com and enter the promo code baseball, and you can save on your next stay. Here comes the 0-2. Ran it inside with a sinker. One ball and two strikes. Elsewhere in the division, Texas at the Dodgers tonight. Anthony Renato getting the start for Texas. Zach Granke going for the Dodgers. Here's the one two. Inside and low. Two balls and two strikes. Seattle after that marquee pitching matchup that went their way last night. With Felix becoming the first 10 game winner of the American League, out dueling Madison Bumgardner. Mariners and Giants tonight, and Ryan Vogel's song against the youngster Mike Montgomery. A swing and a high pop up in a shallow center. And Billy Burns will have the play, comes in a few steps, makes the catch, there's one out. He just missed that one. And that'll bring Matt Kemp to the plate. And Kemp in his last step bat got a breaking ball that he saw well, wasn't fooled, and was able to deposit it over the out of town scoreboard in left field for his fourth home run of the year. Pretty good hitter in this weekend that handles that low curveball quite well. And that's Mike Trout, as Sonny Gray found out about that last year, and he's changed his approach with him. And hey, Trout's great, and Kemp went down and got his curveball very nice. First pitch, a belt high strike. Kemp thought it was high. Is he Falls behind 0 and 1. Albert Pools, by the way, leading the league in home runs for the Angels with 19. Here comes the 0 1 pitch. Swung on, hit hard toward right, but Reddick will have a play. Josh back a few steps. Well in front of the track makes the catch. And now two outs. And by the way, the Angels have made some adjustments with their batting order. For so often, Mike Sosha talked about connecting Number 23, the batters, Yonder, specifically having Alonso. Trout in the two spot, and then Pujols, and then whoever in the four spot. Now they've moved Trout to three. Pujols to four. Cole Calhoun, who was batting cleanup against the A's earlier, has been shifted to the two spot. Now Alonzo stands in, and he takes a change, and it's over for strike one. They're still connected. <laughs> They're still connected, just in a different way. Yeah. One strike offer. Change up again. This one low. One ball, one strike. They thought that the Josh Hamilton would be the, yeah. the back end of that, providing some support in their lineup. And he is now on the disabled list as a Texas Ranger. One and one the count. 
2 nothing San Diego as Derek Norris began the frame with a home run over the barbecue terrace in left field. Here comes the 1 1. Swung on, hit hard toward left. Back is Canna. He'll track it though. He'll make the catch in front of the out of town scoreboard. The inning is over, but the former A, Derek Norris, comes back to terrorize the Athletics. His eighth home run of the year against Graveman. And Ron at the bottom of the sixth inning, it's 2 0 San Diego. The uh, city of Oakland is going to be in a uh, party state of mind. First, the parade for the Warriors as NBA champs, and then tomorrow night, fireworks for the A's and the Angels. Take note, it's a 6.35 start. Sonny Gray against Matt Shoemaker. That's tomorrow night. The A's and the Angels opening up the weekend set of three. 2-0, the A's trailing, and the first pitch to Josh Fegley. He chases a slider. It's off the plate, and he missed it for strike one. Billy Burns and Marcus Simeon to follow. Derek Norris doubled the lead for San Diego with his eighth home run of the year. Here's the 0-1 to Josh. The checks win. Did he go? The answer is yes on the appeal to Mike DeMiro. And Fegley, who bounced the short his only time up, is quickly in a hole, nothing and two against Ian Kennedy. Kennedy giving the Padres a very good pitching outing so far today. The 0 2 way outside one ball and two strikes. Don't you think though a couple of days ago when the A's wrapped up the, the first half of this two and two series with the Padres getting the winning run against Craig Kimbrell. Yeah. Was uh, really yeah. uh, as big a win as the A's have had all year. One two offer swung on and hard down the left field line. Fegley makes a bid and he has cut the Padre lead in half. His third home run of the year. He reaches the barbecue terrace, and the A's now trail it two to one. On a one-two pitch, he got the mistake for Ian Kennedy, and he did not miss it. Well, the amazing thing there, he kept on in breaking pitches, started the first two, then tried to stick a fastball inside, and that is not a good idea because Fenton with his second home run did the same thing on a fastball, and this one down the line, just very quick, and really. He got the pitch he's looking for when he went to the plate and finally got it with a couple of strikes. Now Billy Burns stands in. We'll see if that uh, lights a fire under the A's offense. Just start the bullpen for San Diego. As Billy stands in, takes outside for ball one. A right-hander begins to loosen in the bullpen. And that is Dale Fair, veteran righty. It's 80 pitches. <laughs> Here's the 1-0. Swung on line towards short and caught by Barmas. That ball was taking off, but didn't quite elevate over Barmas's glove. He makes the play, and there's one out. 
That's 14 home runs allowed by Ian Kennedy in 62 innings. We usually go off the average of one home run every 10 innings is decent. So that's a lot. Yeah. 14 homers in 62 innings. The wind, the pitch. Breaking ball strike on the outside corner. Well, I think you both would agree that Petco is a is a more than fair ballpark, more of a pitcher's ballpark, and certainly at night here you would say the same about the Coliseum. Here's the wind and the one strike offer. And Marcus takes low, one ball and one strike. Well, for the two teams in these four games, the Padres have hit six home runs, and the A's have hit four, so a total of ten for these two teams. Here's the 1 1. That's ball bounce to third, a foul ball. And Mike Gallego with a nice barehanded grab from behind the coach's box. Flips it up under the seats. Makes a young fan in A's gear very happy. Normally, when he uses his cap, but it's a helmet to go on clank. Can't use the cap anymore. 2 1 score, Padres leading as the A's have gotten on the board here with a Fegley blast to left. A slider to Marcus is outside, and that evens the count of two balls and two strikes. Sonny Gray and Matt Shoemaker tomorrow night at 635. Roxy Bernstein with the pregame coverage at 6 o'clock. Preceded in the Bay Area with Chris Townsend and the dugout show on 95-7 the game at 530. Swing and a liner to left, hooking toward the corner. That will land. And it's a fair ball right at the 330 sign. Simeon turns at first on his way to second and stands in with his 12th double of the year. So the A's making some uh, loud contact in this frame against Ian Kennedy, and that'll bring Josh Reddick to the plate. And you know this was not how they planned to play him defensively because in center field, Upton was a right center. And yet an off-speed pitch that Marcus Simeon, who tried to hit one out to right center last night, did not today, though. Two-strike double down the line. And Marcus got out to such a fast start offensively for the club in April, then really cooled off. And Beginning to show signs of uh, be, be, being a threat again in the lineup as a Darren Ballsley, the uh, pitching coach, met with the entire Padre infield to discuss what they want to do as Ian Kennedy gets ready to face Josh Reddick. In the case of Marcus Simeon, and granted they talk about his work at shortstop, but also work for a young player at this level because of the adjustments that he has to make and that up and down top of a season it's very hard to be consistent at any age but much less as a as a young player because of how they do make changes and how they're being pitched that's the as he, you have to remind yourself this is still his first that's full right. season no that's matter right. what's been happening around him defensively or working yeah. with Ron Washington etc take that away it's still just year number one absolutely now Reddick stands in first pitch to Josh breaking ball hit on the ground right at the second baseman Spanted Burke goes down to a knee throws the first and Josh is retired he's 0 for 3 today Simeon goes from second to third and now it's up to Stephen Vogt to try to tie the game or give the A's the lead here against Ian Kennedy Triple A has over 100 years of experience saving people in trouble. That's why Triple A and the American Red Cross have teamed up to help people prepare for emergencies and disasters. For every A's game winning save, Triple A will donate $500 to our local Red Cross so you can high five that game winning save, knowing our community will be stronger in times of emergency. To learn more, visit AAA.com slash saves. Boat stands in, first pitch is a fastball, and it nudges the outside corner for strike one. We're in the bottom of the sixth, and the ace trail at two to one. Tying run is Simeon at third base. Steven is 0 for 2, a fly ball to center. And a strikeout. Here comes the 0 1. Breaking ball way inside. Good block by Hedges as he prevented a wild pitch and potentially the tying run from scoring. Steven Boat among the league leaders with runners in scoring position as play began today. A robust 373. They play him the other way toward left center. Not an overship, but Spangenberg, the second baseman, is on the outfield grass. Five or six, six steps off the dirt. Breaking ball. Taken for a strike and vote. You could tell by his reaction. Thought he took a, a close pitch and did the right thing. And now suddenly he's in a hole at one and two. 
one is rung up last night on a on a check swing that was not a check swing. That was by, by Mike DeMuro, third base on fire last night. Got to get a little bit more respect. He's having a great year. You don't treat guys like that. Yeah, the only intent that Stephen had last night in that circumstance yeah. you're talking about was not to get his back foot hit by the pitch, exactly. not swinging the yeah. bat. One and two. Simeon down the line of third, the pitch, fastball just outside. And Kennedy yeah. wanted that pitch from Adam Hammery. If the first fastball out there was called a strike, then that one was a strike as well. Had just tried to hold it, didn't feel like he moved the glove a whole lot. Trying to give uh, Kennedy a good frame. Two and two on vote. Kennedy stretches pitch number 92 on the day. A swing and a miss got him up and in on a fastball and the inning is over. But Josh Fegley hit one out his third blast of the year. It sends us to the top of the seventh inning. San Diego two and Oakland one. One out of the seventh, and once again, here's Glenn. So, Graveman will face Barmas, Venable, and Hedges here in the seventh. Graveman's first pitch, sinker down and into Clint Barmas, who has hit a fly ball to center field and a ground ball to third. So, Barmas 0 for 2. Splitting time at shortstop with Alexi Amarista. And there's a fastball outside corner for a strike at 89 miles an hour. Well, the bullpen active again for the Padres. Kennedy might be finished. Six innings. We shall see. Outside corner again. Good pitch by Graveman. Called the strike and the count one and two to Barmas. Kennedy's due up third in this inning. <laughs> Those two days in San Diego got you right, yeah. thinking about the ninth spot. There's a shot to left. Canna is there. He reaches out and he makes the catch. So Barmas hit it hard. But right at the left fielder Mark Canna, and that's one out here in the top of the seventh. Padres bullpen is ranked 12th in the National League in ERA, and a lot of that has to do, with, no, unfortunately, right. for San Diego with the youngster Cody Mazzoni, who yeah. has given up 12 yeah. runs against the A's in less than two innings in his two outings. Well, if you play three games against the Padres, and we've played that so far, and you only see Kimbrel once and Joaquin Benoit not at all, yeah. that's a good sign. First pitch to Venable is a fastball inside corner call to strike. Venable doesn't agree. And you also see Amarista. <laughs> yeah, Amarista <laughs> has more appearances on the mound than Joaquin Benoit in this series. That's a good thing. <laughs> Venable, a foul out and a single, and he lines one softly. Simeon cannot quite get it, and it's over his head into shallow left center field. So Will Venable has his second hit. 
Well, after Venable last night and actually in the three games, you've seen him trying to pull everything outside today. The last two times, he's gone nicely to left field. And maybe learning quickly that there are some hits the other way. So O'Flaherty starts to throw out in the A's bullpen. So both bull, bullpens. Correction on the batter. Graveman sitting at 85 pitches. Pitch hitting. And we're going to have a pinch hitter. Number Will 11. Middlebrooks. Will Middlebrooks. Right handed hitting third baseman is going to hit for hedges. So this is going to start a chain reaction defensively for the Padres. Middlebrooks will probably stay in and play third. So, so much for the half day off for Derek Norris. Right. Alonzo back to first and Norris back behind the plate. That seems like the logical thing that the Padres would do in the bottom of the seventh inning, but we'll see. So, Middlebrooks pinch hitting for Austin Hedges. So, we remember Middlebrooks days with the Boston Red Sox where he did not quite fulfill the promise they thought he had. Now with the Padres. So Venable, good base runner at first. And Graveman will keep a close eye on him. Middlebrooks with the home run in San Diego. And the first pitch, a sinker and a swing and a miss. It's like Max Muncy showing his versatility. He's grabbed a catcher's mitt and a mask down to the bullpen, relieving Scott Emerson, his bullpen coach, and left handed catcher. So Muncy dons the mask and says, I can show my versatility in case you need an emergency catcher. Not a bad idea. Ike Davis gets ready to be activated <laughs> this weekend. Oh, by the way, Bob, that's right. You're looking for an emergency. There's something else I can do. That's right. <laughs> So Rodriguez and O'Flaherty now warming up. The pitch to Middlebrooks is low, so the count even at one and one to big, strong, right-handed hitter Will Middlebrooks. Spanienberg, the left-handed hitter, waits in the on-deck circle. Venable has five steals in six attempts, and he's got a big lead at first. Graveman delivers, swinging and a miss. So now one and two pitch was away from Middlebrooks. The nice thing about Josh Fegley, of course, Stephen Volk throws well also, but with Fegley's arm, you don't really have to worry about changing your, your thought process and calling pitches. Call the breaking ball that time because he knows if he can get to the ball, he's going to throw somebody out regardless of the pitch. So one and two the count to Middlebrooks, who Middlebrooks. His home run in the series was last night. It was not in San Diego. He's got nine home runs in 27 RBIs. Quick throw to first. Venable gets back. So plenty of power. And that's what Graveman is dealing with right here with the count one and two. Graveman from the stretch and here's the pitch way outside backhanded by Fegley and he made a nice play to make sure that did not go to the backstop. That was a great play because it, there are times defensively you cannot block a ball you just have to become an infielder and you just have to know that with a certain pitch you do backhand it and it's exactly what Fegley did because that could have been a big wild pitch that is save on the ball. Runner goes and the pitch swing and a miss by Middlebrooks throw to second base is high into center field. Venable gets up and he's going to go to third. So Middlebrooks strikes out, but Venable will get a stolen base and the air will be on Fegley, the catcher. Now Fegley double clutched, unfortunately, and when he did that, air mailed it into center field. But boy, all that time happening, and, and one thing that, again, Billy Burns, there's a lot of things happening, but when you see that happen like now that, you have to sprint. Sprint in from center field, because that's a big 90 feet. And at least it's two outs, but still a big 90 feet to allow the runner to go to third base. Billy's trying to learn a lot in center field, but swing and a miss, hitter's not going to hit the ball. We only have one thing to do. So here's the left-handed hitting Spangenberg, who is one for 13 in the series. Venable at third, Padres leading two to one in the first pitch is 
jam shot rolled foul down the third baseline. So Spangenberg jammed badly, did not break his bat. So Graveman jumps ahead in the count 0 on 1. So second error in the game by the Athletics. Vote had an error earlier, the missed pop up in foul territory. Outfield swung around slightly toward left center for Spangenberg. And the 0 1 delivery is looped into foul territory. Third base side, Laurie will give chase, but he will not be able to get there. So the count 0 and 2. Uh, Cap watching Middlebrooks uh, when the throw went into center field, Fegley. Middlebrooks, when he swung, he ducked. I mean, he actually went down, even though he crossed over the plate, but he. He ducked down, and that's all it's something you always look at, even though it was Fagley double clutching. But sometimes the interference will occur. But Meadowbrooks knew that he had crossed the plate and wanted to make sure he got out of the way. So Graveman from the stretch checks on Venable at third, and the 0 2 pitch is a fastball high. So one and two the count. Just think how much money Jason Kendall can make with an offseason <laughs> catcher's interference throwing clinic. Yeah. <laughs> Seven up. Yeah, this is it. This is how you fall into the hitter. And get the umpire to rule that it was interference. He could make a stop at each team in spring training. <laughs> and write a book as he goes. So Graveman trying to get out of this jam. One and two. Here's the pitch in the dirt. Fegley blocks it down and in. So two and two to the left handed hitting Spangenberg. Venable is the runner at third with two outs. Graveman taking his time steps off the rubber now back onto the rubber. Here is the 2 2 pitch and it's rolled foul. Rolling toward the Padres dugout. First base side. 95 pitches now for Kendall Graveman. He threw 111 in that start down in Los Angeles. It was on Saturday. Berg, a strikeout and a fly ball to left field so far today. Venable walks off at third, and here's the pitch. It's hit hard to the backhand side of Sogard, the second baseman, who grabs it, throws to first, side retired. So Graveman gets out of it. Venable is stranded at third, and it's seventh inning stretch time from the Coliseum. The Padres, two, and the A's, one.
Padres clinging to a two to one lead and they're going to go to their bullpen and bring in the right hander Sean Kelly. So Kelly takes over for Ian Kennedy. Kennedy six very good innings. He's going to have to sit back and see what his bullpen can do. First pitch to Billy Butler is grounded to the shortstop. Barnes who scoops it up. And on one pitch, Billy Butler is retired. 6-3 on the put out. The one out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. So for Sean right, Kelly. Kelly making his 21st appearance. No wins, two losses, a 4.09 ERA. He's got 25 strikeouts in 22 innings. Came over from the New York Yankees in a trade this past offseason. Now he faces Brett Laurie. First pitch to Laurie is a strike. Laurie with a double and a walk so far. Padres two, A's one, bottom of the seven. Fastball at 92 miles an hour low to Laurie. So Kennedy goes six innings, four hits, one run, a walk, and four strikeouts. So a very good outing for Ian Kennedy. Back to back good outings for him. 1 1 to Lori in the dirt, scooped up by Derek Norris, who is now catching. So those changes happened as we expected. Will Middlebrook stays in the game at third base. Yonder Alonzo moves from third to first, and Derek Norris moves from first to catch. So Middlebrook's at third, Alonzo at first, Norris is the catcher. Sean Kelly is the new pitcher. Breaking ball is popped up on the infield. Barmas, the shortstop, shading his eyes and fighting that sunshine. He makes the catch for the second out. So, looks like a routine pop up, but I don't know that any pop up or fly ball is ever routine during the day of the Coliseum. Well, the sun. Barmas played it nicely using his glove to shade his eyes, but it is definitely not an easy play. I think the hitter a lot of times will get upset and won't run just simply because they feel they missed a pretty good pitch to hit. And that's the time you hope as a runner that the ball is not dropped. So two outs. Here's Canna. First pitch to Canna from Sean Kelly is a fastball in for a strike. Kelly pitched on Monday night in San Diego. Pitched an inning, gave up a couple of hits, but only threw nine pitches. In fact, he pitched the top of the ninth inning in what was an A's 9 to 1 win. 0 and 1. He delivers. Soft line drive behind second base, but Spanienberg was shaded that way, and he backhands it in the air. Side retired. So Sean Kelly has a 3 up, 3 down. Bottom of the seventh inning. We're headed to the eighth from the Coliseum. Padres 2 and the A's 1.
runs by the Padres, a home run for the A's. So all the runs have come on the long ball today. But as we head to the eighth inning, the Padres leading two to one over the Athletics. And here's Vince Catronio. He's got to keep it right there as Fernando Rodriguez is summoned from the bullpen in relief of Kendall Gray, then who gave the A's seven solid innings, just the two solo shots from Kemp and Norris. And Fernando makes appearance number 18 on the year. An 0 and 1 record of 470 ERA. He worked against the Padres, a scoreless inning, and that was uh, on Tuesday in the comeback victory against the Padres at Petco Park. Top of the order Melvin Upton Jr., then Derek Norris, and Justin Upton. Over the top is the right hander. He delivers high, ball one. So, battle of the bullpens the rest of the way. One and oh, the count. And the pitch outside off the corner, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Brandon Maurer continues to throw in the San Diego bullpen. No appearance yet from Joaquin Benoit. Benoit hasn't even gotten up to loosen in this series against the Athletics. 2 0 pitch, swing and a miss. Upton chasing a fastball. He's 0 for 3 today. Fly ball to right, a strikeout and a ground ball to first base. For the A's in their half of the eighth, Sogard, Fegley, and Burns will be due. A fastball missing upstairs. Three balls and a strike. You cannot afford to allow somebody to reach free of charge here. No. At this stage of the game, down by a run. Three balls, one strike. Rodriguez the high set. And he comes to the plate. Fastball lifted toward right center. Burns tracking it, going back to a deep right center up against the wall along with Reddick. They collide. The ball is in play. And Upton will streak around second. He will glide to third and stand there with a triple. And Reddick is still down on the warning track in right center field. Reddick and Burns colliding right under the 388 sign. And Bob Melvin will rush out to the warning track along with assistant head athletic trainer Walter Horn to attend to Reddick as he banged pretty hard into Billy Burns. Neither one called for it, or at least Burns wasn't called off, nor did he call for it as we got a peek at a Comcast replay. It was maybe catchable, but when the two collided, the ball bounced back in play and Upton stands at third base with an all important insurance run. I was shocked the ball carried as far as it did and, and granted he hit it well and looked for a fastball and got it but the ball looked like it was slicing a little bit back towards Reddick and as he jumped the ball went over his glove but maybe at the same time the collision was occurring and just hope he's all right because that was really head on I mean just two guys meeting. And both of them came fairly close to catching uh -huh. it right before they collided. But unfortunately, with the collision, that the Bill of Burns was able to react to go get the ball. Otherwise, up to him with his speed. I mean, he was at third and thinking about an inside the park home run, but Reddick had to stay down or did stay down, and Billy Burns recovered enough to go get the ball and throw it back in. Josh does not get up on his feet, continues to be attended to by uh, Walt Horn. I just wondered two things. One, if there wasn't a collision between the two, could the catch have been made most likely by Reddick? Yeah. And number two, if Burns laid back and allowed Reddick to maybe play that ball, could yeah. they have kept Upton yeah. at just second base? I'm not sure that's that's definite, but it might have been a possibility. Well, off a right-handed bat, the ball was sliced back to the right side, to the right fielder, and center field, a center fielder. Of course, has the ball hit in the right center, left center field, and they, they react differently off the bats. It seems like Reddick does want to stay in the game as he is in conversation with Walt Horn and Bob Melvin is still out there, along with Billy Burns standing on the warning track. Melvin picked up all the equipment, picked up his sunglasses and his glove, which ended up on the warning track, but a 3 1 count, and Upton gets the fastball from Rodriguez and Puts the A's uh, in a difficult spot. Nobody out a runner at third base in the top of the eighth with Oakland trailing by a score of two to one. 
And obviously there is a concern about Josh Reddick. Looks like he's going to stay in the game, but all the while Fernando Rodriguez down in a catch and pose on the mound looking out and has not thrown any pitches. At least there's some critical at bats coming up with a runner third, nobody out. And at least the way it looked like in the replay, it was body to body instead of maybe head to head. You know, with, with Reddick. I mean he had the hardest it seems, but it, it seemed like it was a body blow to the to the midsection. Now Fernando does start take the warm up tosses, which uh, try to stay loose because the infield had to come in and have a run no, no, no. and nobody out. Number three. So Derek. the A's are forced to draw Norris. the infield in now for Derek Norris, and it opens up a whole bevy of possibilities for Pat Murphy's Padres trying to win their first game for their interim manager. Norris has struck the ball well a line drive to left then he went down on strikes in the fourth and homered in the sixth the A's have drawn the infield to the edge of the grass good speed with Upton Melvin at third base and Fernando out of the stretch to the plate and the pitch is fouled off to the right strike one. His best arm in the outfield is Reddick and right. But you know, you believe that Murphy will push the envelope, even if the ball is hit to a medium depth. Try to get home that insurance run. Norris's home run led off the sixth inning. Next delivery, breaking ball in the dirt, and kept nearby by Fegley. That evens the count of one ball and one strike. Derek Norris, the former A. An all star a year ago. And now with a new club traded for the second time in his young career. He's only 26. Began his career out of Goddard, Kansas, with the Washington Nationals. The stretch, the 1 1. Breaking ball in the dirt again, and Norris lays off. Two balls and a strike. Justin Upton, their most dangerous hitter, waits on deck. 13 homers and 41 RBIs. He has not. Uh, rather he's got 13 home runs and 41 driven and he's there. He's the guy that does the most damage He's only hit into three double plays this year. He's more of a fly ball hitter well, He comes with a fastball now Derek Norris has taken two curveballs 2-2 two -two. fastball check swing and ran it up and in and Norris couldn't get out of the way and Ticks it off the lumber and that evens the count of two balls and two strikes If ever there was a time for Fernando to come up with a strikeout. This is the spot down two to one in the eighth inning, a leadoff triple for Upton. And left hander Drew Pomerantz loosens up in the Oakland bullpen. That's looking ahead to uh, Yonder Alonzo. The stretch, the 2 2. Breaking ball, reaching for it, bounced to third. Picked up by Laurie, holds the runner at third base and sends it across the diamond. There's the important first out in the frame. And now Justin Upton will bat. Went back to the curveball after the check swing on a fastball, and this time it was at least close enough to be in a strike that Derek Norris had to swing at it. And Number 10, that was Justin. one of the best case scenarios. The other strikeout, of course, but a ground ball drawn in infield just as well. Usually, this has been a spot for Evan Scribner working the eighth inning in a close game, especially with the lead, but even down two to one. But Evan has allowed runs in three of his last five outings. And back to back blown saves in LA and San Diego. He's maybe using an opportunity to allow him to kind of take a break and give Fernando a chance. A swing and a pop up by Upton. Foul ground, first base side over the shoulder goes. Bro makes a basket catch. Here comes Upton. Here comes the throw, and it's not in time. One Upton pops it up in foul territory. The other scores from third base, and the Padres extend their lead to 3 1. When Steven caught that ball yeah. over the shoulder, you felt like the door definitely was wide open for Melvin Upton to attempt to tag and score, and that's exactly what he did. Throw had to be on the plate. Steve, I counted. Steven took about four to five no steps batting. with his Number momentum carrying him down the line, yeah. catching it over the shoulder. Of course, did not have enough time to track around, get in front to be able to throw strongly, so he had to spin and throw, and unfortunately, a little bit offline with the throw. So there's your 90 feet for it. Like you described with the ball off the wall, if they could have held Upton to two bases. 
So Justin up to his 42nd run batted in. And now Matt Kemp stands in, takes ball one outside. A sack fly that went less than 200 feet. And Upton uh, streaking from third base, scoring as his brother drove it in with the uh, pop up and foul territory. Hard breaking ball from Fernando is down, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. And of course, the subject will come up foul ball, why didn't you let it drop? It's not the ninth inning with the, the winning run at the plate. I mean, you still have two at bats and you have to get outs, and you never know what Upton would have done had you let the ball drop. Here's a 2 0. It's up and in three balls and no strikes. Plus, do you want to give an, an extra swing to the guy that leads the team at home right. runs in RBIs? Exactly. I don't think you no, want to do that either. But, you know, people will say, I mean, it's a foul ball, but you, 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 you have to look at the circumstances, and this is the eighth inning, not the ninth, and maybe even then you wouldn't have done it because of just what you said. Here comes a 3 0 pitch. Fastball strike to the outside corner. It goes back to what you mentioned momentum mm -hmm. with. With Steven catching the ball and his body moving away from home plate, if he could have caught it, planted and thrown, it would have saved two steps and maybe enough time for a throw around the plate to give Josh Fegley a chance to block off Melvin Upton Jr. from scoring. 3 1 pitch is popped up behind the plate. Back for a look is Fegley, but it's in the seats. Goes the count of 3 and 2. And plus the balls in foul territory. The only thing Upton Melvin Upton had to do was tag because he's not going to advance on a foul ball anyway. So you tag. It's not like a shallow fly ball. Go halfway, tag up, and not know. So all the things worked out in the favor of Melvin Upton, who came into the game hitting a buck 54, 0 for 3 before the triple off the wall. And maybe in hindsight, a catchable one. 3 2 offer. Swung on, lifted out of play again by Campy. Homer back in the fourth inning with two outs. And as he had a breaking pitch from Kendall Graveman, it was his fourth home run of the year. His second against the A's in this series. He's one for three today. With the Athletics, Sogard, Fegley, and Burns in the bottom of the eighth. It looks like it's going to be against Brandon Maurer. Another payoff pitch to righty fires and it's lifted to a right center field not very deep and Reddick has to charge in and take it on a bounce. So Kemp with a soft opposite field single. That brings Yonder Alonzo to the plate. Bob Melvin will appear out of the Oakland dugout. Probably wants the matchup here with Drew Pomerantz against left hand swinging Yonder Alonzo and that is the case. So a pitching change here in the eighth inning a run home. For San Diego. They've extended their lead to 3 1. It'll be the left hander Drew Pomerantz on in relief of Fernando Rodriguez will step aside and we'll come back to the Coliseum after this. Your attention. Fourth, when it came off to disable us previously in the rotation, but then the shoulder stiffness put him uh, on the shelf for a couple of the weeks, and he's come back 
in the bullpen and his record overall two and three a 404 ERA. This is his eighth appearance out of the pen and his third against San Diego. He worked both games at Petco Park one third of an inning and one inning plus against the Padres. And he goes left on left against Alonzo Oakland down three to one in the eighth inning. Alonzo is one for three today. Pomerantz looks at first base slide step and a breaking ball bounced the first base as he chased the spike curve and it's 0 1. Kemp the runner at first base. So the A's it appears will not see at least not yet. If at all Joaquin Benoit the veteran right hander. More confidence in Brandon Maurer right now and he's the one loosening in the bullpen for San Diego. Look at first, 0 1. Another spike curve. That one stays inside and high. 1 and 1, the count. Graveman, seven innings, two runs on five hits. Fernando Rodriguez faced four batters, allowed one run on a couple of hits. He's responsible for Kemp at first base. Toss over to first. And back over easily is Kemp. Astros still leading Colorado five to three in the seventh. The one one pitch way outside loved by Fegley ball two two balls and a strike. Seattle tonight hosting the Giants Dodgers hosting the Rangers tonight Atlanta or rather uh, Arizona against the uh, Angels and the Angels are leading that game going away seven to one in the eighth in the desert. Other American League West scores. Stretch the pitch. Spike curve outside. Three balls and a strike. Clint Barmas waiting on deck. We all thought last night that Barmas was going to be the emergency pitcher. He went down to the bullpen and made a few tosses and then he came back to the dugout. But the A's leading 16 to 2 and Pat Murphy decided to make the change and take out the youngster Cody Mazzoni. It was Barmas going to short and Alexi Amarista who went to the mound. 3 1 pitch, fastball high, and he did not offer. So the left on left matchup doesn't work for the A's. It moves Kemp to second, and now Barmas will stand in. Well, at least Amarista knew he had to take off all that wrap around both wrists to be a pitcher. Last night, uh, Ryan Rayburn and David Murphy pitched for Cleveland. Murphy gave up the grand slam to uh, Chris Bryant. 78 that? mile an hour pitch. <laughs> and Marista last night faced one batter, Billy Burns, and uh, retired him on a fly ball in the right field. And in an otherwise disappointing night for the Padres, losing 16 to 2. And Marista could flash a little bit of a smile. First pitch, a fastball, grounded foul right at the plate by Barmas, and that is strike one. And for Corey Mazzoni, that was the ultimate take one for the team. I mean, <laughs> he almost felt bad for the kid. He ended up two thirds of an inning, eight hits and seven runs. Well, it's Sogard's fault. But if Sogard doesn't get a hit, you know, then he he walks off proudly, or at least walks off. I don't know how proudly. Oh, and won the count on Barmas. Well, he also gave up five runs against the A's. Right. Back in San Diego, for the grand slam. Yeah. But at least Stephen Volk can say that he hit the grand slam off of a pitcher. Chris Bryant has to talk about it being his first, first, first ever grand <laughs> slam. Right. Yep. Who'd you hit it off of? Oh, Cy Young. <laughs> oh, and one on Barmas. Two on and two out, and a run in for San Diego. And a look back to second, no throw by Pomerantz. Was it Wilson Ramos? Uh, Wilson Ramos hit two off position players. A couple of days ago. Two home runs. Two home runs. Yeah. yeah. In Tampa Bay using a Nick Franklin for one of those innings. And Elmore the other. And Jake, the former A. Jake Elmore. The one strike pitch, swing and a miss. Good curve down and away. And Barm has chased it for strike two. It's nothing in two. I think Chris Bryant from the Cubs will probably get the last laugh though. Anybody who's teasing him about hitting a grand slam off the position. Because he's like 6'5 and 220? Yeah. 
He's on pace for 500 home runs in his career. Oh, and two to Barmas. And Pomerantz comes to the belt. Atlanta at second base, and the left hander delivers. Curveball bounced a deep short. In front of it is Simeon, goes the short way to Sogard. They'll force Alonzo at second, and the inning is over. But San Diego tacks on a run with a couple of hits, no errors. They leave two on to the bottom of the eighth. Ace trail it now, three to one. Padre bullpen as evidenced by a 164 ERA in 31 games. The former Mariner is 4 0 for San Diego. 33 innings, 18 hits, six runs allowed. He's walked eight and struck out 25. He faces a Sogard, Fegley, and Burns. Ben Zobrist has grabbed the bat. He's in the on deck circle. A wide in the pitch and a sinker to the outside corner. Strike one from Maurer. Same high school as Garrett Cole in Southern California. Cole eventually went on to UCLA and then was a top draft pick. He's put it all together, hasn't he? Ten wins for the Pirates now. First ten game winner of the majors. Next delivered to from Mowers inside. Tried the changeup. One ball and one strike. And because Mauer was teammates with Garrett Cole, he got some notices. And even though he had mononucleosis in his senior year, he was still drafted. Swinging a bouncing ball to first, backhanded by Alonzo, and he'll beat Sogard to the bag, and there's one out. A's are down by two as Zobra stands in to pinch hit. And he'll bat for Fegley, who homered earlier today. Well, the guest appearance last night by. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen, for the athletics. Adding for Fegley. Guess the parents buy. No, I just don't let you do this. I, I for, uh, forgot. <laughs> Dallas Braden came by last night and uh, picked up the pitching slab of his perfect game on Mother's Day in 2010. Zoe Brisk with a home run in San Diego as he takes outside ball one. That was against Andrew Kashner. He's batting 244, three homers and 21 driven in. Last night for the A's. Four hits and four runs scored. And he takes a change on the inside corner. And now the count is even at a ball and a strike. He has scored 11 runs in his last four games. And he has nine hits during that stretch. And the next delivery is down low. Two balls and a strike. This thing Dallas Braden didn't have a chance to talk to a lot of former athletics who might have been there, but so Briston. Then BJ Upton actually played for the Tampa Bay Rays in that perfect game. 3 1 offer to the outside corner of strike. He missed the count at the 2 and 2. 
And Zobris this year off the bench is 0 for 3. 6 for 37 in his career. He swings late at a pitch down and away, and he's gone on strikes against Maurer. So back to back outs, protecting a two run lead for the Padre right hander, and that'll bring Billy Burns to the plate. Now batting, center fielder. Now a uh, analyst on ESPN. With a lot of that's hair and beard. Happens to a lot of us, Ray. <laughs> well, his was because <laughs> when he was getting a trim, <laughs> messed it up. Burns stands in, takes outside, ball one. Burns one for three. His hitting streak now at nine games after he single back in the third. A's need some base runners down by a couple. Mauer's pitch to the outside corner, a strike, and it's one and one. Oakland will welcome in the Angels. Starting tomorrow night, 6:35 with the fireworks following the game. Sonny Gray and Matt Shoemaker. 1-1 one, one pitch is wide. Two balls and a strike. Marcus Simeon waiting on deck. Mauer's allowed one home run this year. He deals inside and low. Ball three. Three balls and a strike. Right-hander Evan Scribner loosening in the bullpen for the Athletics. And he'll get the uh, ninth inning for the A's. Next pitch a strike on Burns fills the count of three and two. That was a good take, and I always like to see. And Billy Burns, it's a learning experience for him. Three and one takes a fastball, knowing that the A's need base runners. Down by two. Payoff pitch swung on. He just got a piece of it. Bailing out, making contact with the bat, and stays at three balls and two strikes. Two outs and nobody on for the A's. Going back to the sixth inning between Kennedy, Kelly, and Maurer. They've retired seven A's in a row. Backdoor breaking ball fought it off and just nicked it out of play over the A's dugout and we'll pause 10 seconds station identification on the A's radio network. Another payoff pitch and Billy throws the bat at the ball kind of makes contact fouls it off to the left. Alongside Glenn Kuyper and Ray Fossey, Vince Catronio with you. Oakland trailing three to one. They have not led in this game. Down to one nothing on a camp home run, extended to two nothing on a Norris blast. The A's got one back when Josh Fegley went deep. But then the Padres added an insurance run at the top of the inning as Billy swings and loops one right past the end of the A's dugout out of play. And he continues to fight here against Brandon Maurer with two outs and nobody on in the eighth inning. Next pitch will be the tenth of the at bat, and he's used about everything. 96 mile hour fastball dropped it down to two seamer, and he's trying to do something different with Billy Burns. 3-2 pitch swung on out of play again by Burns, back behind third base. I think the best thing for Billy Burns right here is to, of course, foul off tough pitches, but also recognize the pitches out of the strike zone and walk. I mean. A pitcher is going to try a lot of different things, and if he happens to throw one down out of the strike zone, be patient enough to take it and get on base. Another payoff. Swung up, bounce on the right side. Coming in for the in-between hop is Alonzo. He'll race Burns to the back. Billy tries to dive for the bag, but tagged by Alonzo. Going by, and the inning is over. The A's go one, two, three. We go to the ninth. Oakland trailing at three to one.
correct. That is June 21st, and the A's will be hosting the Angels right here at the old Co. How about a nice pair of socks, Vinny, for Father's Day? I'll get you a pair. You're the best. We'll swap socks. Oh, I got to get you some, too? Yes. Well, don't, the swap, the, don't swap the ones you're wearing. Swap yeah. the new ones. Yeah. They'll be new. Yeah. This warehouse has some good socks that you what guys I'm wear. Saying. That's what I'm saying. Evan Scribner comes out in relief, making his 33rd appearance. It's the most on the team among the league leaders all year. He's 2-1 and one at 338 ERA, 34 and two-thirds innings, 32 hits, 14 runs, three walks, 37 strikeouts. But he's been bitten by the home run bug recently. Facing uh, Will Venable to start the frame, and it's a good curve that starts the ninth inning, and it drops in for strike one. So Graveman, Rodriguez, Pomerantz, and now Scribner. He's down by two, and the 0-1 swung on and grazed into the mitt, held on by Stephen Vote, and it's nothing in two. Vote has left first base. He's behind the plate. Marcana shifting from left field to first, and Ben Zober stayed in the game. In left as the A's pinch it for Josh Fegley. 0 2 pitch is high. One ball and two strikes. And the familiar vulture setup of one hard throwing Craig Kimbrell is underway, loosening of the bullpen for the Padres. 1 2 pitch hit out of play behind third. Simeon, Reddick, and Vote will be due against Kimbrell. Doesn't quite give you that, that full look. Down to the bullpen, but when he's in the game, he leans over and he spreads the shoulders and has the elbows out. One two pitches inside, two balls and two strikes. Scribner, a former Padre himself, is getting him from San Diego. Two two, strike three caught on the outside corner, and Venable knew it. He is gone a looking. Seven strikeouts for Oakland pitching. And that will bring uh, Will Middlebrook to the plate. Number 11, Will Middlebrook. Middlebrook struck out off the bench in the seventh inning. He's down three to one in the ninth. A fastball low, one ball and one strike. Scribner, as play began today, tied for the league lead in appearances with Chunichi Chizawa of Boston. Mark Sepchinski of Cleveland, Aaron Thompson of Minnesota, and Nick Hagedon of Cleveland. He delivers the next pitch. It's outside, and it's 2-0. and He readies the righty's 2-0 pitch. Swung on, popped up. Right side, foul ground. Scribner crossing into foul territory. Being called off by Mark Canna, and Mark makes the catch for the second out. And that will bring the second baseman Corey Spangenberg to the plate. So this will be the last Corey time the A's Spangenberg. see the Padres today. Their next interleague series will be at home on the next homestand against the Colorado Rockies, a three-game series beginning on Monday, June 29th. As the A's will see their old buddy Walt Weiss. First pitch down and away, oh, ball one on strike. Spangenberg. Next time the A's pitchers have to hit 1 0 pitch a strike. It's 1 and 1 will be across the bay in San Francisco against the Giants. That'll be an exclusive National League trip. Three against the Giants and two against the Dodgers. Here's the 1 1. That's ball foul back. It's 1 and 2. Say so have to hit or get to hit. They've got a tough act to follow behind Evan Scribner or behind the Scott Casimir rather. That is true. Joy Gallo made uh, history, I guess, off of her play. He crushed the ball against the left. Matt Adams did it for the Cardinals last year in postseason. One two pitch, curve ball, swung on and rolled toward the A's dugout. Every home run Gallo hits is. That's right. He does the four, four forty prodigious. Plus. Yeah. Has a long swing, generates a lot of torque. One ball, two strikes. The pitch lifted out of play. Spent some time working with the, the former A, Jason Giambi, in Las Vegas. And you can see a little bit of that, the way that he approaches his swing. 
firing that lower half. Those fans, I think, they've got a date tomorrow. As we see on uh, Comcast, have a date tomorrow with the Warriors with their big parade. Curveball low. Two balls and two strikes. By the way, Joey Gallo probably will strike out more times in one year than Giambi did his whole career. I mean, that's one difference in those two. Because sure. Gallo was struck out, but Jason was was very still. He took a lot of walks, but also a lot of home runs. 2-2 two -two pitch, strike three, caught the knees away, and Evan Scribner has a 1-2-3 top of the ninth. Now the A's need two to tie against Craig Kimbrell on to the bottom of the ninth inning. Padres three, Oakland one. This season was getting underway. Appears for the 29th time. He's one and two, a 3-8-1 ERA. So he's been human this year. He's allowed three homers, 26 innings, 23 hits, 12 runs, 12 walks, and 38 strikeouts. So Kimbrell, who came from the uh, Atlanta Braves, will face Marcus Simeon, Josh Reddick, and Stephen Vogt. With the A's down by a couple. Marcus one for three, doubled his last time up. This copyrighted broadcast is presented by authority of the Oakland Athletics for the private and non-commercial use of our audience. Any reproduction or retransmission of the description and accounts of this game in any form without the express written consent of the Oakland Athletics is strictly prohibited. Kimball's first pitch, it's low and outside, ball one at 96 miles an hour. The commissioner of baseball, Rob Manfred, will be here tomorrow. He'll meet with the media before the game, and he'll hang around for some of the game between the A's and the Angels. Here comes the 1-0 pitch. Outside off the corner, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Well, Simeon needs to get on so Josh Reddick can hit the same ball he hit in Atlanta last year against Kimbrough. And maybe today it will go out. The left center. Yeah. Crushed it. Of course, a big yard in Atlanta and it stayed in the park. Two and over oh, the count. And the righty fires. And a fastball strike over the inside corner. With the commissioner, there's been a lot of conversation about the all star game voting considering. So many Kansas City Royals are likely to be voted into the uh, starting lineup for the American League in a game that counts. It'll be interesting yeah. to hear his uh, yeah. his thoughts on maybe tweaking that moving forward. Two one pitch hit out of play off to the right, and now Kimbrel's come back in the count to even it at uh, two balls and two strikes. I always think about the game in the past before it meant something was played for pride and played to win and played the best players to play whereas now it seems everybody needs to play and it means more especially with a home field advantage two and two the count Kimbrough readies from the third base side the righties pitch swung on and missed dialed it up at 97 and got it by the swinging Simeon and there's one out 
Jays have equaled their longest winning streak of the year at four. Now batting right fielder. And that's in danger of stopping right here unless the A's can rally back in the bottom of the ninth inning against Kimbrell. Reddick is 0 for 3. He has grounded out twice and popped behind the plate. They don't quite do the full overshift on Josh. He takes a strike on the outside corner. It's 0 1. We talked about that swing last year. This is a Georgia native. Yeah. And what that would have meant to Reddick to have that kind of moment. In Atlanta against the all star closer Craig Kimbrell. Oh, and won the count. Kimbrell readies and fires, and a fastball golf to left. Back on it goes the left fielder up, and he turned every which way. He almost did a 360 back there and still managed to make the catch. Plus, he slipped and looking at the turf, and as he planted his foot, almost slipped and Almost fell down, but able to reach back and make the play when he did get turned around a little bit. And nice recovery no, as he slipped and actually went right guy. into where the ball was Steven. landed. Now the A's last chance resting with Steven Boat down three to one. Steven today is 0 for 3. To set the pitch. Fastball strike. 16 runs last night for the A's on 20 hits. And today so far one run on only four hits. It's just not right, man. It's you just, just right. you just don't know from one day to the next. Here comes the 0-1. Fastball pulled into right field down the line, giving Chase back there. Venable. And it is a fair ball snuck in the corner. And Bud will dig around first. They'll slide into second with a two out double, his eighth of the year. So there is still hope for the A's as Bo turns on one and drills it into the right field corner. Well, it's a little fastball, and I'd say a pretty good spot for a left handed pit, uh, hitter down and in to drop the head of the bat and take close if it's elevated, be a home run. This gives Billy Butler a chance. The A's are down by two. And Butler is the tie run. We've seen him turn fastballs around. That's not the issue. Just can he time it and get one in a spot where he can do some damage? He is 0 for 3 today. Sent one to the wall in the fourth inning against Ian Kennedy. That was tracked down by Melvin Upton Jr. Kimbrell leans over, has both elbows extended. Really spreading the shoulders as he gets the sign and delivers a breaky ball. That one somehow catches the inside corner for strike one. Adam Hamery has had a, a strike zone that has had both sides shaking their heads from time to time. Tyler Clipper loosening in the A's bullpen with the hope of getting a chance to maybe pitch extra innings today. A one swing and a miss. It got away from. Norris and that will move vote from second to third on a wild pitch. But the A's are down to their last strike now for Butler at 0 and 2. He swung at a fastball and didn't get it. <laughs> they go breaking ball. Kimbrell gets a new baseball rubs it up and. Climbs back up on top of the hill from the back slope. Outfield deep, and they play Billy to the opposite field. Oh, and to the count. Kimbrell, the high set, and the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him on a slider. And the Padres salvage a victory and get victory number one for their interim manager, Pat Murphy, with the Padres. Padres win it 3-1. to one. Back with the totals after this. Thank you.